Rodriguez. I'm the developer of UDrop, and I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough on how to use it both as an end user and how to expand on it as a developer. So kind of showing you the front end and the back end. Um, so let's get started. First, you're going to want to download the, um, the binaries uh, from our GitHub page. So we're on Cider Lab. Um, droplet image processing. Notice that it's a private repository so you're gonna have to uh, get permission from Krishna uh, but hopefully we should have this uh, public in the near future. Okay so let's go to releases. Uh, you're gonna want to download the zip for Mac uh, if you're running Mac and Windows if you're running Windows. Um, I'm gonna be running on the Mac version but the only difference uh, should be instead of running this line uh, if you're on Windows, you're going to be running this line. But everything else should be the same. Uh, so we're going to download the zip. Um, we're going to unzip it. Uh, here I unzipped it on my desktop. So here in disk, uh, this is UDrop Generation. This is the unzipped uh, file. All right. So you're going to see when you unzip it, a lot of these dependencies. Uh, and the one file we care about um, is called UDrop Generation over here. Okay, so let's get to use it. Uh, so I'm going to open up Terminal. If you're running Windows, you're going to be opening up uh, your command prompt. And uh, I'm going to go to its location. So it's on desktop. Uh, what did I call this? Droplet image processing. Uh, U, U drop generation. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, let me get to it. Oh, I'm sorry. Dist. And then you drop generation. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're going to run this uh, by just uh, getting the name of the executable. And again, if you're on Windows, this is going to be the .exe file. Um, and we're going to give it the location of one of our droplet um, process, uh, droplet generation videos. Um, so I have on my desktop uh, kind of a short little video of droplet generation um, that you can see right here. Um, so we're going to analyze this one. Um, so that's going to be on my desktop. So tilde slash desktop uh, crossjunction.avi. Okay, so we're going to run that. Um, and then ffmpeg is going to split it um, into its frames. Um, so remember that to use this program, you need to download FFmpeg. Uh, this is going to fail if you don't have FFmpeg available to use as a um, command line tool. Uh, you can look up how to download it online, uh, both for Mac and Windows. It's super easy, um, and it's super useful outside of this anytime uh, you're doing anything with videos. Uh, if you don't want to use FFmpeg, you can split this in. You can use whatever you want to split this into frames and just put it into a folder called frames. Um, in the same directory as uh, as your uh, executable and uh, then you can just call the executable with no arguments and it'll just use the images you put in there um, but I like FFmpeg because it kind of takes away the complication of um, spinning into frames okay so here we have our setup page um, so we're gonna draw a bounding box first which is where we're gonna be looking uh, for the average pixel values um, so as a general rule of thumb, you want to make sure that you don't draw the bounding box too large. This would be an example of a bounding box that is too large, and I'll show you why. If we keep going through the frames, um, oh, and excuse the uh, awful uh, artifacts uh, from this .avi file. Um, it shouldn't mess up the processing, uh, but uh, it, um, sometimes it does uh, mess up the colors a little bit, but it should be fine. Um, but this bounding box is too large because we see how two droplets are in the same bounding box is going to mess up our values. Um, so ideally when you draw the bounding box uh, you're only going to want it to be centered on one droplet. And uh, to be honest we only need to take the droplets uh, diameter so this is like the only part that we need. We don't need to see the whole droplet. Um, so you can uh, you know cut it uh, um, so it only shows a part of the droplet um, which might give you better values. So if you um, the important part is you scroll through here and you make sure that every droplet uh, gets its uh, time in this uh, box. Um, 
So it looks good. That looks like a good bounding box to use. Okay, next we're going to have to um, specify to the program um, the uh, micrometer to pixel conversion. Uh, so the way that you're going to do that is we're going to specify the scale of this video. So we're going to give a real world scale, so that's in uh, micrometers, um, to the pixel scale, which uh, you see on the video. So a good way to do this is um, I know the width of this channel. This is a 300 micrometer channel. Um, so I can draw that width uh, in pixels. So I'm going to draw uh, my first mark here, my second mark here that forms a line like this. And then I'm going to draw a point off of here and it draws a perpendicular line to this point. So um, this is this blue line distance is the pixel distance. It's probably like 125 pixels. Um, and we're going to give that uh, pixel distance in micrometers. So that's a 300 micrometer channel right here. Okay, and that's going to tell us how to convert um, from pixels uh, to micrometers so that uh, these results actually mean something to you. And uh, next we're going to give it the frames per second. Because uh, you want your droplet generation rate um, in seconds, not in frames. Uh, so you're going to need to give the frames per second again so you can get a real measurement from this. Okay, now we're going to hit confirm. Um, it's going to take a while to process. Uh, surprisingly not that long. Um, and this is the analysis page that you get. Okay, so to explain a little bit how the program works, uh, we start off uh, with this is, the, uh, this is the unaltered frame. Then we apply Canny's edge detection to it, and this is kind of like the edge, uh, the edges that it detected of this frame, and then it does contour mapping to get the diameter. Okay, um, so what you see right here, this wave, is a graph. These are this is the frame index uh, on the x-axis, and the y-axis is the average pixel value of uh, of the edge detected frame. So the idea is, um, I'll go to the we're at the beginning right now, um, so. Um, this is frame 30, so there's nothing in frame right here, uh, so we have an average pixel value of 0. And then as the droplet starts getting into frame, the average pixel value gets higher because more of it's in the frame, as you can see, until we hit a local maximum. And then you see the, um, the, pix the droplets start to leave the frame, at which point we kind of get a waning over here. Um, so that's generally the idea behind the program. Uh, Sometimes it messes up, so to fix that, um, so let's say right here, we'll go to frame 19, or yeah, let's go to frame 19. Okay, so this is frame 19, um, and let's say we decided that frame 20 is actually a better representation. Frame 19 is too early, so we want to do it at frame 20. Well, that's okay. We can change our local max to 20 over here and hit apply, and that'll shift this over 1. Okay, so this is the... Uh, max that we're working with. Okay, so the droplet generation rate is calculated by the number of local maxes um, divided by the range of our start and end values. So this is a start value, right? This is uh, where we start measuring our data, and the end values uh, on the other side of this frame, um, or on the other side of this uh, sine wave, I mean, uh, and that tells us where to stop uh, collecting our data. Okay, so um, uh, that's our um, our number of local maxes divided by the range of our start and end valley. Okay, so that's how we get our droplet uh, generation rate. So that's drops per second. Um, and to get our average droplet diameter down here, um, so we're gonna look at each local max, right? And then at each local max, we're going to do this contour detection here. Um, get the convex hull, and then find the major diameter of this rectangle that we fit to it. Okay, and that's going to be our droplet diameter. So the droplet diameter is calculated each max, which is why it's important that each droplet diameter, uh, or that your local max is, uh, you know, truly form the local, you know, when the, pick, when the droplet is completely in frame, because that's going to determine where uh, droplet diameters are calculated. Um, so if... Um, you're going to want to, after you change the local maxes, you're going to want to recalculate this. Um, and that's going to change your uh, droplet diameter. Uh, the reason it changed is because now uh, frame 20 is different from frame 19. Um, so that changed our droplet diameter because it calculated a 20 instead of 19. Um, so uh, let's say that one of your droplet diameters is completely off and it's throwing off your data. 
Um, so this is like when a contour is detected badly or something. Um, so we can see that that messes up our standard deviation and everything, and everything's horrible now. Um, you can fix that problem by either replacing this with the average, um, or what I would probably suggest more is to just delete that data point um, so that, uh, you know, uh, badly detected droplets are not uh, calculated into this. Um, so that should give you a basic idea on how to start diagnosing this. You can probably fix most things by just changing these three values here. Um, and that's if there is problems. I very rarely have problems with this. Um, so you can probably just quickly go through and make sure everything, you know, looks relatively okay. And then, um, you know, I, I would feel comfortable trusting uh, the numbers that it output right here. Um, but I'm going to give you an example. So uh, we, all, we do triangular smoothing to this wave. So these aren't the true pixel values. Uh, these are kind of the smooth pixel values. So I'll show you uh, the graph with no wave smoothing applied. Um, and uh, you can see the graph looks kind of wonky, and I've uh, fixed it recently um, to where uh, you won't get uh, double counted maxes. But um, So the idea here is that like this little island, imagine it. So imagine this is a water line. This is the mean value of our average pixel values. Um, and uh, imagine like this is the water line and these are islands. So we want to find like the tallest point on each island, basically. Um, but there can be accidents where a, um, a max shows up right here. Um, so uh, this is why where you're gonna, um, if it's something small, you can probably fix it with the local maxes. Uh, but if the graph looks as bad as it looks right here, um, I really wouldn't trust any of these local maxes because this is so jagged. Um, so you might. Uh, go add some wave smoothing to this. So we'll do 0.5, uh, 0.25, and 0.1. Uh, rerun it with those params uh, to, get a, to get a nice smooth graph. And this is, um, you can look on Wikipedia for the definition of how this works, but this is just your basic uh, moving weighted average, so uh, triangular wave smoothing. Um, you hear it called. Um, the next thing you can do is if your contours are looking weird, you can fix it with the edge detection thresholds, um, which is a little more complicated. I suggest only messing with this if you know what you're doing. Um, but if you are confident that there's a problem with either too much noise or too little noise, I'll, I'll show you what uh, I'll show you what too much noise looks like. So let's um, decrease our threshold values. So let's do 30, 20, uh, rerun the params. Uh, this is a low edge detection threshold, so it's going to detect a lot of edges like this. And you're going to get a really screwed up graph. Uh, that looks something like this. And then I'll show you what it looks like um, when you have way too high edge detection thresholds. We'll do 190, 180. Um, and um, the graph doesn't look as bad, but you can you can see. So looking at this edge detected frame, like this kind of looks like, uh, you know, we're missing some of the data here. I mean, this isn't horrible, um, but you can definitely see, you know, it's it's going to miss... Uh, some of the edges here, which can lead to some inaccuracies here. So if, if this is happening to you, you can try to mess with the edge detection thresholds. Um, and all these are is uh, in Canny's edge detection algorithm, um, you have a, the higher parameter is, um, okay, so first Canny's edge detection thresholds uh, detects gradients across the entire pixel field. And then, um, so each uh, gradient has a value, you know, at each pixel. Um, so if that gradient is above 190 in this case, it would be considered definitely an edge. So this is definitely an edge, so it gets drawn. Um, if it's below 180, it's considered definitely not an edge. So no matter what, it will not get drawn. For values in between 190 and 180, um, it goes by the proximity uh, to an actual edge. So if there's something like far away from any uh, you know, true definite edge, then it won't get detected as an edge. But if it's right next to it, uh, it will get detected. Um, so uh, it's kind of hard to see how this affects it without playing with it a little bit. Um, so I would encourage you uh, to try playing with it. Anyway, that's about all there is uh, for the end user. Um, so you know you can all, you can read the wiki uh, for the actual outputs that you get from this. Uh, so these are kind of um, the outputs that you get uh, just from looking at this. But I also print out the sine wave so you can analyze this yourself using your own statistical methods, and then, um, you know, all the calculations. Um, oh, and one more important thing. After you finish 
you know, editing all these values, if there's any mistakes here, make sure you save your modified outputs um, so that if you do do additional statistical work, you're doing it on the clean data instead of the dirty data. Okay, so that's all there is for the end user. Um, I'll quickly go into, um, you know, what you need to know as a developer. Um, so the wiki should have most of the steps uh, for working with this, but just to get you started, um, you're going to want to uh, clone the uh, clone the wiki, or I mean, I'm sorry, clone the uh, clone the git that I have up. Uh, you're going to want to work with the udropgeneration.py uh, file. So this is basically every all the code for it. Um, it's three main classes. Uh, you're probably only going to care about one class. So the first class is just the setup uh, GUI thing, which was the first thing that I showed, um, which just tells you. You know, it gives uh, you know the bounding box and you know a, a nice front end for the user, basically. But if this gets turned into a web app, you know you're gonna have to throw away this class, basically. Um, so uh, what you're probably gonna want to be changing is the analysis class. Um, so this is what actually does all the back end work. Um, so that's doing uh, all the um, uh, calculations uh, behind the behind the hood. And um, this run analysis thing is basically the bullet points of this. Uh, so reset the output uh, directory, uh, create the wave from the average pixel value, smooth the wave, uh, get the wave maxes, uh, get the droplet generation rate from the maxes, uh, get the diameter uh, at each max, and then write the outputs. Okay, so very simple. Um, you know, uh, some things you're going to want to change in the future, maybe. Uh, doing this by um, frame correlation instead of, you know, average pixel value, you know. However you decide to change it up, the changes would go in this class analysis. And then I also have another GUI class, which was the analysis class that you saw at the end, uh, which you're going to have to rewrite if you do a, um, if you do a web app for this. Um, and of course, feel free to email me at any time in the future. I'll try to get back to you. Um, with some timely manner. If you're having trouble uh, with any part of my code, I tried to comment it as much as I can, but you know, going from developer, there can be issues. Um, oh yeah, uh, the, uh, the requirements. So um, this is everything we use right here. I'm using OpenCV and just map. Uh, OpenCV and NumPy are basically the main things I use. Uh, for the actual detection stuff, and then, you know, Pillow and Matplotlib and TQDM, these are all kind of UI stuff. Um, so, hopefully that'll fix up most questions along with the wiki, so just check out the wiki if you have anything else. Um, any more questions on this? Um, and, uh, you know, um, feel free to email me with any questions, and uh, hopefully everything goes well for you in expanding this program. All right, thank you.